All right, this video is going to be concerning the screw thread mic. On the video, you saw three types of uh, screw thread mics. You saw the uh, comparator mic, which is 60 degree anvil and spindle. It had a uh, 60 degree at each end. It was a, to compare one thread to another. That's all it was for. And then you had the fixed anvil mic, like you saw the Starrett on the video. Uh, it, had, it was set for a certain pitch, uh, such as uh, 10 to 14 pitch, uh, 16 to 20 pitch, but you had to use a different mic for each pitch of thread. But this is a multi-anvil mic here. And I know in your lab exercise you're going to be doing several threads, so that's why we got these particular screw thread mics. Otherwise we would have to buy a whole set of each, and that could get quite expensive. So the first thing we do, we identify the thread that we're going to measure. So this is a half 13, and I'll show you how we know that. Measure the diameter, the major diameter. Make sure you tilt your calipers. I get about 496, 0.496. And if I look in the machinery handbook under a class 2 fit, I see that it's uh, 487 to 498 is the major diameter. And I know you couldn't see that, but then I take my pitch gauge. This is a pitch gauge. This is a little bit rusty. It's when I had my shop. And I put the 13 leaf on it, and it fits right in there. Okay, see the 13 leaf? It fits right inside the notches. If it's not the correct leaf, it will not fit. So I've just identified this as a half nominal size major diameter of 496 thousandths and the 13 leaf fits in it properly. So now I know I have a half 13 uh, thread, and that's what I'm gonna work with. So the next step is I get my micrometer, and I wanna find the um, spindles, or the, I'm sorry, the anvil and the spindle. Uh, and if you can read that, your eyes are better than mine, but it says nine to 13 uh, TPI, threads per inch. So the one with the groove that's in it, like this, it goes in the anvil, the anvil's in the bottom, and they just set in there. They've got little snap rings. And then the 60 degree in goes in the spindle. Now the way that you calibrate this is very important. Uh, if it's not calibrated, it doesn't work. So the first thing we have to do, we have to set it to zero. So step one is set your micrometer to zero, and right about there is zero. And lock it down. See that it's on zero? My reference line, my zero line, and my first graduation marker all lined up. Now what I do, since this anvil moves in and out, see how it moves in and out? I want to push it all the way against the spindle and lock it down. Okay, so it is now locked. So now I'm ready to measure my threads. And we're looking for pitch diameter. In pitch diameter, we're looking at the flank of the threads. That's down inside the threads on each side. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our micrometer and we wanna make sure we're in a straight line. And we hear it click, I'm looking this way. I wanna make sure that it's okay this way. And I also want to make sure it's okay this way. I don't want to be tilted like this or like that. I want to be straight on the threads. Now it does have a galvanized coating. It may throw it off just a couple tens, but we'll never know. Okay, so there's my reading. I get 400, um, 25, 50, 70 thousandths. That's 470 thousandths. So let me look at my uh, machinery handbook. Actually, that is... Not 470, it is 400, I don't have my glasses on, so that's my excuse, sun's in my eyes also. And it's a Friday. So it's actually four, 445 thousandths, okay, because I don't want to count that last tick mark. Sometimes it'll throw you off, but you can just turn it a little bit, and that would be, right there would be 450. So this is 445 thousandths. So if I look in my machinery handbook, it'll give me the pitch diameter, and it should be 443 to 448. So by looking at this, I can see that my pitch diameter is acceptable. 445 is in the middle of 443 and 448. So that's where I would write that down on your quiz. 
on your lab exercise, you're going to write down the uh, pitch diameter right here, 445 thousandths. You would convert that to metric using the 25.4. I would major, uh, measure the major diameter with the inch micrometer. I would me uh, measure the major diameter with the metric micrometer, not with the caliper. I'm just using the caliper because that's what I have here at home. Then I would measure the entire length of the boat with the caliper, then with the steel rule, then with the uh, steel rule with inch, steel rule with metric. Okay, so I would have everything I need to do that. And I get, on the length, I get uh, 3 inches, 283 thousandths. And I would write that down. And then I would measure it with a inch steel rule and the metric steel rule. And that's exactly how we would do that. So let's do maybe one more. Uh, and when you get into anything below a quarter inch, say you have a quarter 20, quarter 28, any thread that is below a quarter inch is going to be assigned a number. And that's what this chart is I put on the back of the lab exercise because you see quarter 20, quarter 28. Below that, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. Okay, so when I pick up a boat, or a screw, I don't know if it's an 8 or a 10 or a 12. It's sometimes difficult by looking. So I'm going to do one here. And just for instance, I don't know what this is. I know it's less than a quarter inch by looking at it. And I measure it and I get 182 thousandths. If you can see that, 182. And I'm sorry I keep pushing things to the left of the screen, but that's, uh, that's what I do. Um, okay, 182 thousandths. And I look at my chart and I see that the 10 is 189. That's the major diameter. That's the nominal size. Okay, so it could be a 10, 24, and I know it's not an 8 because 8 is 163. A 12 is 215, so 182, 183 uh, would be a 10. So I know I have a number 10. And if I look at my machinery handbook, it would give me the range of diameters, where this just gives me the major diameter, um, usually a couple thousandths under. Uh, max. Um, so I know that I have a 10. It's either a 1024 or a 1032. Okay, so now I need to use my pitch gauge to find out if it's a 1024. No, it's not. You can see that the gauge doesn't fit. I'll try a 1024 here. This was a 32. That didn't fit. The 24 fits exactly in there. So I just identified this screw as a, this is a 1024. The diameter is consistent with the number 10, and the 24 leaf fits right in the teeth. Okay, so now we want to measure the uh, screw pitch, uh, the pitch diameter. Okay, so now we need to take these anvils out, and we'll take them and put them right back where we got them so we don't lose them or get them mixed up. Okay, and the next set I have here if we can see that, if it's humanly possible, it says 14 to 24. So this would be the anvil that I need. This is the anvil at this end, this is the spindle. Okay, I slide that in. Um, I'm going to put the spindle tip in the anvil. And I do the same thing that I did while I go to adjust it, unlock it. See, it moves it moves a little bit so it's it's gonna be adjustable for us but I need to take it all the way into zero and it would be really nice if I had a cameraman here but uh, my horse my dogs my cats they just don't get it I don't know what their problem is okay so here we're set at zero my anvil I'm gonna push it all the way up against that and lock it down now I have calibrated this now I'm gonna open it up now we shall put our, oops, I'm spinning here. We'll put our screw in here and we'll see what size we get. We wanna make sure that it goes through nice and neat. Here it click, that's our ratchet stop. I'll back it up just a little bit. Okay, oh, thought not. Let's try it again. My anvil's turning on me there. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So I will lock it down, and it looks like it's going to be 125.50 uh, 
uh, nine and a half. One hundred. Uh, twenty-five, fifty, fifty-nine, one fifty-nine and a half, and I could go around to the edges and get the half of a thousand, the five, uh, maybe six tenths. So if I wanted to get really critical, uh, really picky on this, I could say one hundred fifty-nine thousandths and six tenths. So we look at our chart in the machinery handbook, and we look at the ten twenty-four. There's 1024, class two and three fit. There's our major diameter. Major diameter range is 181 to 189, and we had 182, 183, so we were okay. But the pitch diameter should be 158 to 161. Okay, 158 to 161, and I have 159, so I'm well within range. Okay, so for the 1024, same thing. I would write pitch diameter uh, 0.159, convert it to metric by times uh, that number by 25.4. Uh, measure the entire length of the boat with the dial calipers. Use a steel rule. Give me the inch measurement, the metric measurement. Use the micrometer, the inch mic, to measure the diameter. Use the metric mic to measure the major diameter. Write those down as well. Okay. Now let's do a third one. If we don't run out of uh, tape, I think we'll be okay. So let's pick up this last screw, okay? And it measures to be 100, and I'm holding these things all crooked and everything, I'm sorry. Uh, 160 thousandths, okay? 160 thousandths, major diameter. So if I look at my chart, 160, I see that 160, 163, 137, 189, it's going to be a number 8. This is number 832 or it's an 836, one or the other. Okay, so I get my handy dandy pitch gauge and let's see, is it a 124? No, that doesn't fit. 132, yes, this is a, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is a 8, a number 832. Don't call it an 830 seconds, it's not, it's an 832. It's a number eight based on the major diameter. It's a 32 pitch, 32 threads per inch. And now we need another anvil because this anvil stopped at 24. So we're gonna change the anvil again. And I'll open it up a little bit. You gotta use your fingernails to pull the anvils out. If they'll come out, this one was floating around on us a little bit and they do that sometimes. Now we're gonna use the one that says 28 to 44 because we have a 32 pitch okay and that should be good and we'll put the anvil in and the spindle in make sure they're pressed all the way in they have little o-rings on those and we want to calibrate it again the same way we're going to take it all the way in okay and we're going to set it on zero oh, better loosen it up set it on zero right there and now you notice again the anvil moves in and out. I want to take and push it hard as I can all the way up and lock it. Okay, then I can open it up. I can check my thread. And I'm doing this without my glasses, which is amazing. And it looks good. Make sure your ratchet clicks. I'm nice and straight across. I'm not tilted. Okay, make sure you're in the middle there. And it looks like I'm getting 100 and 25, 35, 40 thousands. 140 thousands. Okay, so let's look and see uh, what the pitch diameter is in 832. 832 is right here, and that's the Unified National Course pitch diameter um, is 141 to 143, actually 144, 141 to 144, um, or 140 to 142, 43, 140 to 143, and we had 144. So we're a little bit big on this one, 144, unless, of course, it could be a class three fit, see right there, one is loose, two is medium, three is tight. One is a wing nut, two is a tractor supply, nut or boat, three is an aircraft part, normally something good and tight. So 832 Unified National Course, um, class three fit, 
class 3 fit, the maximum pitch is 143 and 7 tenths. So I'm just right at that maximum point. So I would say that's probably okay, but right or wrong, I would put that pitch diameter 832, I would write 144, and if I wanted to get it to the tenths, I could do that. Convert it, inch mic, metric mic, dial caliper length, inch roll length, and metric length. Okay, so I hope this helped clarify how to use the screw thread mic. So if you have any questions in class, just come and chase me down. Um, even if I'm lecturing with another class, I'd be glad to take a quick break and come over and help you. Thank you very much.